Good. Thanks. Uh, okay. Um, so, um, the aim of our, of our session uh, this morning is to uh, offer you some resources that you can adapt if you join our session uh, to help researchers uh, with cost estimation and by uh, helping them understand why they should do it in the first place, uh, the benefits of, 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 of doing that for the services that they get, uh, the kinds of uh, costs that they can include. And um, we'd like to get to a template uh, to offer people useful questions in the data management plan about costing. And we hope that we can draw on your expertise, but because uh, I'm sure that there are a lot of expertise in the room from people who are doing this already. Um, if you're thinking, do you really want us to create a, a costing guide on a Monday morning? Uh, I can reassure you that my, my colleague, uh, uh, Joy Davidson, will uh, give an easy uh, entry point to doing that. Um, so, um, a little bit about our South Sam Angus White, uh, and I'll be joined in the session by my colleague Joy Davidson and uh, Ryan O'Connor. Uh, we're research data specialists at Digital Creation Centre uh, based in Scotland. Um, we do applied research and support, for example, DMP Online, guidance resources, training, consultancy, and um, events such as. International Data Creation Conference. Uh, we're also one of the partners in Fair's Fair. Um, and I'm very pleased that we have uh, uh, joining us in our session, Annalisa Montesanti, who's uh, uh, not actually a, a, a direct colleague of, of ours, but uh, is um, with the Health Research Board in Ireland. and. Um, will be sharing her experiences with a uh, pilot project on, on funding for FAIR. Um, so I don't want to say too much about FAIR's FAIR. Uh, it's a, a large project uh, funded under the uh, Entry EOS call by the Commission. Um, our, Objective is to supply practical solutions for use of fair data principles throughout the research data life cycle. And its uh, emphasis is, is on fostering fair data culture and the uptake of good practices, it says here. And there are five main partners, uh, as you see here. Um, we're part of uh, the much uh, broader context of, of uh, EOSC related projects, including Shock, of course, and uh, uh, Daria and the other infrastructures that uh, make up the cluster projects and the um, regional and thematic projects, along with a whole lot of working groups and um, interest groups. And of course, this slide is already out of date because we now have the EOSC Association replacing um, the, uh, or evolving from the governance structure that is already there. Um, but uh, that's not really our focus today. It's on um, putting recommendations in, into practice. And we are um, uh, heavily guided in Fair Sphere by Returning Fear into Reality report, which is a couple of years old now, uh, but still very relevant. And among its recommendations are uh, uh, ones directed at uh, funders, institutions, uh, data stewards, and research communities themselves on uh, costing data management. So to include the costs in a data management plan templates and develop examples and guidelines. 
Um, and it's uh, increasingly the case, of course, that uh, the funding bodies expect data management plans and expect data management plans to uh, be explicit about the costs uh, that um, data management activities will entail. Uh, so the Science Europe uh, practical guide to research data management, uh, which has uh, just been relaunched with uh, an evaluation rubric for data management plans, uh, says uh, under uh, section six of that uh, rubric that uh, a data management plan ought to provide clear estimates of uh, resources and costs and uh, gives a number of categories for, for, for doing that. Um, so how do we um, make the case to research communities and others in the institution for, uh, for doing this? One way is to uh, point to the, the cost of not having fair data. And this is a report which um, I'm sure a lot of people have already uh, heard of, and it's uh, one that came from the Commission in 2018 uh, from Press, Press Waterhouse Cooper, um, which uh, gave an estimate of £10.2 billion pounds per year uh, uh, just within Europe uh, because of not having fair data. And I think the main point here is that the first two items take up most of that cost, and, and they're, the costs are in the hands of uh, researchers themselves uh, to do something about, uh, because their time spent on searching for new data to create uh, often um, takes more time because there's, there's not proper metadata and, and, and also uh, the cost of uh, not being able to um, or, or re recreating copies of data that are, are unnecessary. So going back a few years to another report uh, from the UK, uh, which was uh, done by uh, Neil Beagrie and John Houghton for, for, for JISC back in 2014, but again, it's still relevant, I think, but which was looking at the returns on the investment in uh, well, then open data, but uh, fair data is relevant as well. Uh, at the, the, the returns on the investment in data centers, and that showed uh, quite convincingly uh, for UK funders anyway, that um, uh, there's a, a really high return uh, for the investment in facilities like the Economic and Social Data Service uh, uh, in, in their estimation up to 10 times the investment over the 30 years that yes, TS had been on the go at that point. Um, so coming back to the um, challenges for the uh, principal investigator who needs to be convinced to, to deal with this, there's still questions around why they should do it. Uh, and uh, what they should include. And also, what's, what's going to influence the, the, the cost? How do they make a realistic estimate? So, um, um, it's not really the focus of this presentation, but I, I think everyone realizes that the incentives for uh, data management are still a work in progress, uh, and that the um, 
uh, awareness of 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 our gifts data value is uh, is also often uh, not very high, except when it comes to uh, reasons for for hoarding data, which uh, researchers are, are uh, find it quite easy to find. Uh, we have a guide called Five Steps to Decide What Data Keep to Keep, which is um, on our website with a link there, uh, which uh, covers some of the um, indicators of, of value. Um, then looking at what activities to budget for, again, there's uh, low awareness of what can be included. But this is actually uh, quite well covered by some of the guidance that's already out there. Uh, so um, I've included some examples here. So there's the uh, a good uh, guide covering uh, the Horizon 2020 guidelines from Science Technology uh, Facilities Council in the UK. Um, KDS uh, back in, I think it was 2014 again, produced uh, a data management costing tool and checklist, uh, which has been uh, recycled a number of times. Firstly, in uh, this guide that came out, um, I think again, 2018, uh, from um, uh, the Dutch uh, group LCRDM, um, which uh, gave a very useful uh, guide to uh, uh, activities to cost. And this has been used uh, also by Open Air. Um, so if you go to the Open Air website uh, at that link, uh, they break down the uh, data management plan sections into, into six fixed categories and look at activities to, to cost there and give guidance notes and examples of um, the kinds of things to look for. Uh, and uh, this is all uh, very helpful. And however, uh, a lot of the guidance is of, of the nature uh, uh, like, like this, uh, it, you know, give, giving broad uh, parameters um, of, the, of the kinds of things that costs depend on or concrete examples. And, and that's really where, coming back to your hairy professor, um, we think there's uh, a need for more guidance on the factors that influence costs. So, so we, we can actually offer more specific questions with the data management plan. Uh, so, we know already that some of the, the, the time costs that researchers tend not to include around, around areas like data, data cleaning or wrangling and anonymization, transcription, applying metadata standards. So uh, a source that uh, comes from uh, out, outside health, uh, sorry, outside, outside social sciences and humanities, uh, and uh, it's from the US, is this recent study from National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine, uh, which came out last year. And th this looks to be, a, a, I think and hope, a useful source that we could. Uh, potentially ad adapt, and it, it puts uh, the, uh, the activity costing in a broader 
context and suggest a series of steps that we can take to uh, come to realistic estimates. And the first is, to, uh, is just to think about the scope of why the data needs to be fair and think about the, the cost drivers that relate to the, the data itself, uh, the life cycle that we expect for it, who's contributing to it and who's going to reuse it. Uh, the, the kinds of value that it's going to have uh, and where that comes from, uh, the, the activities, um, the staffing, the, the facilities that, are, that you're going to use and the roles and responsibilities. These are the things already, already covered, uh, as I mentioned, and, and then the other cost drivers. And, and they give 10 categories of cost driver in this report, ranging from uh, the content itself, the kinds of capabilities that are going to be applied to, to the data, uh, how much uh, control needs to be exercised over it, how complex that is. Um, uh, I don't want to just read through this list, but what I'd like to suggest is that in our, in our breakout, we can look at this in a little bit more detail and, and ask uh, uh, to share thoughts on uh, the kinds of questions that, that we, we ask uh, uh, to support data management planning about uh, costs that can help uh, the researchers to get to a, a, a first a relative estimate for the cost going to be high, low, or or or, or just uh, uh, moderate, um, and 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 then get get to the and uh, more specific costs uh, through that. Uh, so that's uh, where uh, we'll come back to uh, in, in the breakout session. Uh, and uh, after a little bit more from, from me, we'll uh, hear from Annalisa and her case study hear from my colleague Ryan on the infographic uh, that uh, you produced in, in, for open air on, on, on the course and how you can adapt it. Uh, and, and then Joy will uh, give you the introduction to what, we'll, uh, what we hope you can do with us uh, for Thursday. And, and that's it, thank you.